Our worship begins with our confession and forgiveness, and I invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I invite you now to take a moment of silence and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. For those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I invite you to, stay se to, to be seated as we sing together, My Country, Tis of Thee. I invite you to stand again as you are able, as we pray together our prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens, and your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end, Bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. Our first reading... Our first reading is from Acts chapter 1. Before he is lifted into heaven, Jesus promises that the missionary work of the disciples will spread out from Jerusalem to all the world. His words provide an outline of the book of Acts. Luke writes, In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, But you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 1. The risen and exalted Christ reigns over the entire universe. The author of Ephesians prays that we are given the wisdom to know the power of the risen Christ and the empowering hope that the knowledge of his inheritance provides. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. And now I invite you to stand as you are able. As we celebrate together the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the day of his ascension, Jesus leaves his disciples with a commission, a blessing, and a promise of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead and on the third day, and that repentance and repentance forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. 
Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you all to be seated. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now this is a message that I have been looking forward to all year long. Preaching on the Ascension is so extraordinarily dear to my heart. And, well, you'll learn why. It starts with, uh, it was a conversation that I was, uh, I was having with my son. It was my son, Owen. He's 10 years old. And uh, we were talking about Jetpack Jesus. Uh, that's, uh, that is the, uh, the affectionate way of referring to uh, the painting that, uh, that we have uh, beautifully displayed um, in our sanctuary. As I understand it, it was, it was painted by the, uh, by the very uh, the first pastor of this church. It's of Jesus ascending to heaven. It's right up there. Jesus, Jesus ascending to heaven. And um, I was telling Owen about the, the history and the heritage of, of this, this beautiful this piece of artwork. Um, and he made this observation. And he, as he put it, he said, it, he thought of the, it was the long line of, um, of, of pictures of what he called the church leaders um, on display all the way up to the sanctuary. And, uh, you know, talking to Owen, I realized that we, what he was, he was referring to was our, our confirmation photos, our many, many confirmation photos, all leading up to the sanctuary doors. And what Owen noticed, he said that this painting is in, it's framed in the background of most every single one of these pictures. Every single one of these confirmation classes has jetpack Jesus, you know, Jesus ascending to heaven in, in the background of, of, that, of these photos. And it's been like that since the very beginning. This image of the ascension is very much intertwined into the life into the life of this, of this church. And I know for many here, there are many here who, who I'd say they don't like really, okay, well, I don't know, I don't really like that painting anyway. And there are others, like, like myself, I love it. I love it so much that I look up like while I'm praying and I can feel this communion with our Christ. You know, this beautiful, beautiful painting. And, and it just, it just showed me that you know, it, it's important you know, we don't really preach about the ascension nearly often enough around here. And right now more than ever, it's time that we really, that we really do so and that we talk about the ascension, about what it means, about why the ascension of our Lord is so incredibly important. And especially right now, the fact that to preach on the ascension, I'm not able because of, well, the, the way the world is, because, just because of the state of our sanctuary, because of what just happened in our sanctuary, I can't preach about the ascension with that painting behind me. That's, that pictures, that's the closest I can get right now. And um, a little bit about what that means. Because we talk about, I mean, the resurrection very much in our faith, and for very good reason. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the, the, the empty tomb, I mean, this, that, is, that is the cornerstone of, of our faith. The fact that Jesus died 
and rose again, that the stone was rolled away. But the, just the whole, the, the whole miracle of that moment, it doesn't stop there. In fact, it never truly stops in our lives ever, but it, the miraculous nature of it, it continues. And it continues in that moment when Jesus rose bodily to heaven. Because as the story goes, it was after Jesus, he, he returned from the dead, and then, after, then for after, after 40 days, after he rose from the dead, he then spent time with his disciples, preaching to them, teaching them, preparing them for everything that was going to happen next, giving them the promise of the Holy Spirit that would lead them and guide them. And then Jesus said goodbye, and he rose. He ascended, body and spirit, in to heaven. You know, it's one that, it's so important. I mean, we actually speak of it every, whenever we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. We actually speak of this. We say it every week that, that uh, he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. That he returned. Jesus returned to heaven without dying. Meaning that he, there he had finally, he had conquered both death and life. Which means he's coming back. If he went there alive, means he is coming back to us. That he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And Jesus doesn't say when. Even his, even his disciples, they want to know. They want to know when, when will this moment happen? When will he return? But he won't tell them. Jesus only answers that it is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. It is not for them to know when. It is not for us to know when. After ascending to heaven, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will return to us. I mean, it could happen right now. Or, it could happen in a billion years. I kind of think it would have been a really neat trick if the world had ended right then. Uh, be like, he's right about something. I'll, I'll try again. I'll try tomorrow, and I'll see if it happens. I'll see if it works. After the rapture, we can talk about it. You never know. But, and then, to guide, to guide the, the to guide the disciples through this, he then, he then gave them, he gave them the Holy Spirit. And then he was gone. He was gone. His work on earth was done. His work on earth in the flesh was over. And it was, it was time to return to the Father as the eternal Redeemer. And this is when I, I look at our readings and I ask myself, what does that have to do with us right now? I mean, right now. I mean, this is all, I mean, these make for very interesting theological discussions. The kind of thing that at seminary we would burn the midnight oil talking about the meaning of the ascension. But this is also so very, to know the ascension, to believe and understand the ascension, this is so, also so very practical. That, I mean, there's more 
to the Ascension then debates and discussions about the end of the world. There is more to the Ascension about debates and discussions about what it really looked like. No one would know unless you were there. There are so many different artistic understandings of what Jesus' ascension to heaven looked like. I mean, what was it? You know, jetpack Jesus, where he just rocketed skyward into heaven? Was it perhaps a slow ascent where Jesus, Jesus disappeared into the heavens? Jesus disappeared into the clouds? Or is it, I don't know, maybe something out of, I don't know, something out of Star Trek, where he just sort of slowly disappeared? And do any of these things matter anyway? I think what matters the most is that Jesus ascended to heaven. That he ascended bodily to heaven. And so do we. We too ascend in our daily lives. And I'm not talking about rocketing skyward, in, though that does sound like a lot of fun. I'm talking about something more personal, something more incredibly spiritual that can change our lives on a day-to-day, on a day-to-day basis. I very often said that, that the resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ That for us is truly, this is an opportunity given to us every single day for a resurrection of our own. That no matter what kind of trial or hardship we might be going through, there is always the opportunity to be reborn and to start over again. Every single moment of our lives is a moment to start over again. That is the gift of the resurrection. Even in our baptism. In our baptism, in our baptism, we are literally born again in the waters. And that is a rebirth that doesn't stop until the very end of our lives. But during our lives, as we are reborn again and again, We also ascend with the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are given that opportunity to ascend to heights we probably never thought that we could achieve. And I am not not talking about any kind of ascension that has to do with money or fame or power or glory or glamour or whatever that is. All those things in life that don't matter. I mean an ascension that is this creates, it's this radiant connection with our Christ. Literally rising, ascending, rising the kind of ascension that makes our lives better. That the the Jesus ascension, what it tells me, that we believe in the resurrection of the dead. The ascension is the resurrection of the living. It is the ascension of the living every single day. Ascending to God's call. You know, think of that painting again. And it hurts my heart that we're not able to worship before it. Love that painting or not. Yeah, I love that painting. But love that painting or not. Not being able to worship before it just, it hurts right now. And to not be in the sanctuary, and it's easy to lose heart. Anyone could lose heart during times like this. Or we can embrace the opportunity given to us every day by our Lord to be reborn, to rebuild, and then to finally, 
to ascend. To ascend. We, we have a long road ahead of us. But we always have. We, we've got a lot of work to do. But we're good at that. And of course, it's going to take coming together as a community, but that's what we do. We've been doing it for 115 years. All that time being reborn, redeemed, and rebuilding over and over and over again. The whole time ascending. All of us ascending. We are ascending right now. And we are stronger. We are truly stronger for it with the, with the guidance and love of our Lord and the Holy Spirit. We are stronger for it. So may the peace that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds with Jesus, the Christ of God. Amen. We continue our worship now as we sing together, Son of God, Eternal Savior, and I invite you to stay seated. I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words 
of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And set free from the captivity of sin and death, we pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. Wash us in your Holy Spirit and make us witnesses to your resurrected life. Let our fellowship be a sign of the presence of Christ in the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reveal your creative power at work in creation. Cleanse the air, land, and waters with the movement of your spirit on the hearts of your people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In faithful and diverse worship, turn all people toward you and your loving will for humankind. Bridge differences among traditions and across faiths. Unite us in mission for the sake of the world in need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the suffering death of Jesus, draw near to those who suffer. We pray especially for Pastor Marty and Lola Rugi, Jody Porter, Connie Seidel, Claudine Ross, Brittany Rochman, David Malky, Deb Jefferson, Roger Suda, Shelby Lloyd, Sue Wellenstein, Paul Diedrich, and Bernice Hildebrand. We pray on this, especially on this day, for those, uh, for the children and for the teachers who lost their lives at Robb Elementary School in Texas. Please guard the hearts of their community that they may they heal in your loving mercy. Hold them in the palm of your hand and give them rest. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, rouse us to remember the faithful witnesses of the saints who have gone before us. On this day, loving God, as we celebrate Memorial Day, let us us lift up the lives of our soldiers who have died in war and our soldiers who have returned home and continue to need your love and your care. And by their lives and the life and death of Jesus, enlighten our hearts, give us hope, and lead us in wisdom. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept the prayers that we bring to you, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Reach out to one another and share the peace of Christ.
I now invite you to stand again as you are able for our offertory prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gathered with his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it always, so that you may remember me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And now, let us pray together in the words that Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are invited to the Lord's table. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ given and shed for you. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with this one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive tonight's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and always give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We conclude our worship now as we sing together the battle hymn of the Republic.
Go in peace. Tell everyone what God has done. Thanks be to God. We will.